lack balance in their life. They either work too much and don't spend time relaxing and enjoying their life. We, as a society, tend to be very anxious about a lot of things. We're always running, running, running. Um, and we don't take time to enjoy life for how wonderful it is. And because of that, people struggle with a lot of mental health issues. Uh, anxiety and depression probably being two of the major ones. When I went into private practice, I knew that I wanted to have a therapy dog. He is probably one of the more popular parts of the practice. Um, people will come in specifically to see him. And children, of course, love him. When Max goes flying out in the waiting room to greet them, it just helps relax them a little bit. He often will jump on the couch, as he just has done with me off and on, and that makes them feel really comfortable. One of the most important pieces to mental health counseling People have got to be motivated or really willing to change. You know, many times we're doing things in our lives that don't work and we're really miserable, but then when somebody offers an alternative, we're very committed to doing what we're doing. And you might say, well, why would I be committed to doing something that's not healthy? It's just what we know. Interestingly enough, with depression, many times people will come in and they've been depressed for years and we start to do the work and yet they really have difficulty because they don't know what it's like not to be depressed. Some clients that come in that are just motivated to change, motivated to find solutions and do very, very well, particularly children will do very well. One of the most common issues that I see with children are some sort of behavioral problem. A good clinician understands that before you really start to treat the child, you need to look into the family dynamics. Many times if there's a lot of stress in the home, Kids don't know how to cope with that and they will cope with it behaviorally. And unfortunately, they're acting out or um, maybe they're mouthy and so forth. So one of the things that I look for are, are they a problem at school? Because maybe they're just a problem at home. Well, if they're perfect angel at school and then they're difficult when they get home, there's something that goes on when they get home that's causing them to act out. Many people go, oh, she, he has ADHD. Eh, not necessarily, you don't just turn that on and off. One of the things that I see particularly with hyperactivity is that kids are not exercising the way that they did when we were little. They're spending a lot of time um, on either uh, internet or video games and they're not moving. And because of that, they don't get rid of energy and therefore they're hyperactive. So as you can see, this is, this is an example of somebody that might need a walk. So that would be, that's a, a typical example of children that I see. Um, unfortunately, in a lot of divorce cases, kids get stuck in the middle. Um, and that's very, very sad to see. Uh, a lot of the, the parental angst gets um, manifested or transferred onto the children. And that can be uh, a difficult case for sure. People, particularly women, not always women, men too, that have difficulty with boundaries. So they allow people or partners or in their life, husbands in their lives, that they allow them to treat them in a way that's not okay. And they get what they call dependent personality, which means no matter how poorly they get treated, it's okay. And they come in with a lot of anxiety, a lot of anger issues and so forth. It can be extremely challenging to treat that kind of person, again, because they get very committed to what they're doing, even though it's not working. So boundaries is, is something that I see way too often, and I, I wish as, as children that parents would do a little bit better job helping children establish boundaries and, and learn to speak assertively, not aggressively. We get those mixed up many times. Normally what I like to do when I see clients is I like to give them the skills and they will at least understand or learn very quickly, even if they're not with me, what I would probably tell them or recommend for them. My goal is for them not to see me long term. I do have some clients that like to come religiously once a month because they like someone to talk to. That's fine. But my goal, particularly for children, is to treat them, give them skills, and then let them move on with their lives. I learn as much from clients as they learn from me. I learn to practice balance in my life. Uh, I learned that I have to walk it, not only say it, but I gotta I got be willing to walk the walk, not just talk the talk. And um, sometimes, and so it's accountability for me too. So I, I really enjoy what I do. Hi, I'm Dan Dempsey, and I would like to just introduce Denise Schoenwald to you. 
I was a pastor for many, many years. I met so many people that had issues they needed to discuss with a professional. And I would like to tell you that our society is full of stress, as you well know, finance, relationship, personal problems, and they need someone to talk to, someone that is knowledgeable, experienced, compassionate, and that person is Denise Showald. I have had anxiety disorder, actually panic disorder, and I have tried everything, and I did a few sessions with Denise, and she actually helped me, and now I can drive freely, and I have zero panic. I don't think you can put a price on happiness. I think, again, she says, you know, true wealth starts with mental health, and that is so, so true.